Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on the Mike with Mike. It is the premier business radio program in the area. I'm your host, Mike King. I appreciate you being here with me. The views expressed here are mine of no connection to support our agreement with any other host information ads on the station. I don't work for the station. My program just airs here on a daily basis. So join me as our cutting edge show. We uplift the community and showcase RVA in a different way. The sounds you're listening to are emanating from the fabulous Hilton downtown at Fifth and Broad Street. We're here on Wednesdays, talking to all the game changers in the area. You can follow me on social platforms at hashtag on the mic with Mike, as well as hashtag uh, Mike King Bids. So we'd like to thank our good friends here, Dasha and John here at the Hilton. They take care of us. We're here as part of the Mike King Bids radio network. So it is my honor. We are bringing to you Lacey from, she is from the Symphony, Richmond Symphony. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. All righty. I always say to folks, this is a business show. Let's get your elevator, your 30 second elevator pitch. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, sure. I'm the executive director of the Richmond Symphony and the Richmond Symphony performs and educates and connects with our community uh, throughout Richmond using music. Okay. But you guys do it. There's music and then there's the symphony. So <laughs> it's, it's for you guys to do things sort of in a way, if people look at it as stylish and elegant. Let's talk about what was your start in the symphony? Um, well, I got my start in band, actually. Uh, you know, I was in band. For, yeah. for people who had never been in band, band camp is cool. <laughs> you know, for people who are not out, who are not in band, you know, band camp is, is awesome. What it does is you're, you're with fellow bandmates and you're doing, I was in the marching band, I wasn't very good. I, I used to play the clarinet, but then it wasn't cool enough, and I moved on to the saxophone. Oh, I know, a real, <laughs> that's a really cool instrument, the saxophone. So what did you play? I played the French horn. Okay. And I played mellophone in the marching band. Okay. I was the drum major of the marching band for a year. Okay. Love football. <laughs> band is better, like band, band competitions. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. uh, people have their view and their idea of, of the symphony. Let's talk about what that means. And you as the executive director, what is your mission there at, at the symphony? Um, our mission really is to connect our community um, with music and music education and to make music a central part of the lives of everybody living uh, and learning in Richmond. So Richmond is really uh, a creative town. Have you always been a creative besides music? Are you creative? I would say I'm not a creative, and that's probably why I'm on the executive side of the company and not well, on the artist side of the company. I'm more uh, spreadsheets and strategy and less creativity and uh, performance. So your history, and so I took so you, you from California. You did a lot in California. I worked in California for 15 years. One of the things, so I'm from Philadelphia. I had moved to California with the Army, and the mindset of California changed through fundamentally. Huh. Because I've never seen holistic living like that. I've never seen sure. the idea of you don't have to be your stuff. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, what was it about California that helped start you on the path of being in in the symphony? Sure. Well, I moved there specifically to be around a place where the creative culture was such a major part of the economy, where there are lots of orchestras and arts organizations, theater, uh, opera, sort of everything. So I could be around sort of that big creative center um, that is Los Angeles specifically in my case. Um, and, and got my first job at the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra, which is um, an orchestra that got its start where the musicians were movie and studio musicians living out their artistic dreams with Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra. So sort of the, the height of creativity and artistry kind of coming together in a way that just was really fun and exciting. What makes so what makes Richmond so it's Mike as well as Lacey here we're coming to you from the Hilton. This is Mike King Biz Radio, ESPN Richmond 106.1. That's where we are every morning from five to seven. What makes Richmond such a creative high spot? You know, I think Richmond is one of those, uh, is particularly in this phase right now where um, it's a city that's growing, it's a city that has had a, a sort of re uh, emergence of food and beer, craft beers, um, arts, artists, and music. Uh, and there's always been that history of music, 
whether it was jazz music or orchestral music or R&B, uh, rock, a lot of bands have gotten their starts here. And so I think it creates that feeling of creativity in Richmond that allows other creatives to thrive. I, I asked the leaders of organizations this, what did you learn coming through COVID that the chamber that uh, you guys, the symphony had done that you never did before and you figured, oh, this kind of works. Absolutely. Yeah, there were a lot of learnings out of COVID for us. Um, so the Richmond Symphony in particular is one of the only orchestras in the country that really continued performing throughout COVID. So they started performing um, under severe restrictions with only 250 people in a 1700 seat hall, very empty, uh, and musicians at 10 foot spacing, that's very far away. Um, and having to do a lot of really creative programming. When you have 100 musicians on stage, you do one kind of programming. If you've got 20 musicians on stage, or if you can only fit five or seven musicians into a room to record, uh, then you have to do a totally different kind of programming. So I think the symphony really experienced a whole other set of flexibility, learning to perform new repertoire. But the other thing we really started doing was streaming and using digital assets. Um, the orchestra is a 300 year old entity. Not a lot of technology used to be in that space. And uh, in the times of COVID, we started streaming all of our concerts and we're still doing that now. And we have a commitment to doing that probably forevermore or until those things change as well. ESPN Richmond Mike King here. We are at the Hilton, the fabulous Hilton. So we got, we got a bunch of people in the house today, friends of the program, friends are coming through. So uh, we're gonna meet some of them as, as we go along. Ma'am, uh, you, you come through COVID, everyone is distanced the way everyone, how do you maintain, bands have culture. Yeah. Bands have culture, you know, regardless of what type you're in, how do you maintain that culture when people are spread here and there? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think some of the culture was maintained just by trying to get through it all together. I think all of us were just trying to figure out how to deal with these new normals and that really bonds artists and administrators and board uh, people working to the same end. Um, but I think otherwise, you know, in this particular case, we had to start digitally with as many connections and conversations as we could to make sure we could keep the connection that allowed the art to be created in, in as strong of a fashion. Ma'am, I am I'm not the most cultured person in the world. I'm just gonna straight up tell you that, that one. <laughs> so uh, you guys have a lot of outreach programs and the programs are to take the arts and take them to places where people wouldn't normally think of the symphony. Sure. Let's run down some of those because I remember you guys were out in the park. Yeah. You guys had a couple of programs, a couple of summers, but that was pre-COVID. What are you doing now and why is it so important? Yeah, um, it's great timing. Uh, so this, in the coming weeks alone, we have concerts at Chimborazo uh, Park, free and open to the public. Um, that concert is in collaboration with VCU Health, a tribute to health workers, a thing we know is very important now. Um, we have a program called the Mile of Music, which is actually chamber music around a literal mile in Forest Hill Park. Uh, again, free and open to the public. Oh, um, you can cool. come and listen and walk and listen and talk, bring kids, bring dogs. Um, and then we'll be down in Chesterfield at Pocahontas State Park. So all three of these programs, uh, totally free and open to the public. I think it's so important to provide opportunities for communities to come together in locations near their homes, to hear music, to, to have community, and just to connect with one another around the art form. But the symphony also does programs at uh, Partywood with beer and music pairings. We've got concerts at the BMFA. I mean, we're everywhere. It's, it's a, I guess, it's not a makeover, but it's taking chamber, the, the music to the masses sometimes where people may not, we may have something about coming to see the symphony. Sure. And it's a different, it's a, it's a different ex experience. That's right. And there's a lot of different kinds of music and programming that an orchestra can do. And so we want to make sure we're not just presenting one thing or in one place, but being in a place where someone could happen upon us and be like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. <laughs> exactly. Because, and now, so when you guys are, are reaching kids and you're dealing with younger people, sure. let's talk about when you see the light come on and they get the magic happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. So we have um, a lot of education programs in the schools and in our concert hall, as well as youth orchestra programs where kids um, come together and perform uh, coached and, and different things. But there's really nothing like that the child's sort of first opportunity to connect with music or finding that instrument that's perfect for them, that they've got a spark, whether it's band or orchestra, whether it's singing, um, or even if it's a guitar, anything that sort of brings music to their sort of hearts and their lives, I think changes the way, the way they see the world. 
And, are you, and so how can people find the sensitive? Um, the, we are present on all things social media um, and our website is richmondsymphony.com. Um, we've got concerts all the time, all different kinds, something for everybody, whether it's movie music, regular classical music. Um, we've got pops program. We'll be doing a, a program next year with Butcher Brown, uh, just a wide variety of things. So check it out. I'm sure there's something you know and love and something you'd love to discover. When you, as, as the, the person who's in charge of the symphony, mm -hmm. how do you set culture, like a good culture? Uh, business culture, like in our organization? Yes. Yeah, so we've got a staff of 25 people and um, an orchestra roster of 70 uh, regular employees plus extras that come on when we need them. Um, and setting culture is really important, and we do it through uh, various learning opportunities in our organization, as well as connective staff and team meetings, goal setting, and then those all important sort of professional development opportunities where we also get to get out of the office and go do some planning and strategizing and connecting in a park or in a cool space. So the symphony is, it is a nonprofit? It is a nonprofit. Alrighty, ma'am. Uh, this is the part of the program where you, you get an opportunity to show some love to your sponsors, people who help, because I always say changing the world ain't too easy or free. Yeah, that's true. And so one of the things that has to happen is sponsors and that people have to help you guys stay afloat. Also, you volunteer. Volunteers play a big part. Let's, let's show some love to the volunteers that you have out there. Very much, absolutely. Nothing we could be that. Nothing we do could be done without our volunteers, our corporate sponsors, our individual donors, our subscribers, our community partners. I mean, there's so many. See, that's how you do it. You know, it's like you throw it out to show some love. Okay, well, we have a number of people, but we know we'd like to thank you for coming on the program. Uh, on the mic with Mike, what we do is we give you guys an opportunity to tell your story. Uh, it's a, it's a great story. Uh, what we're helping you do is get the story to the masses. You guys are doing some outstanding things. So let's go down where can, people can find you again and, and we, you know, and the things that are happening. Absolutely. So the easiest place is at our website. That's richmondsymphony.com. Um, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, you can find all of our concert listings in any of those places. So when people come to you and say, hi, my name is Mike. And you know, I say, where do you work? What's the look on people's face when they tell you, when you tell them where you work at? <laughs> uh, often the look of, of surprise and sometimes excitement and occasionally confusion. There are a lot of people that are like, that's a job? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it is because a lot of times it's a passion that people have, but it, it's it also a thing where people don't understand what it takes to run an organization like that. You guys are putting on quality, you know, programming, helping the kids, the next generation. You have people living out their dreams. How did, really quickly, one of the great parts about having your own radio show is, you can think of things. How did the musicians make it when you guys were, were uh, coming through the pandemic? Yeah, so, um, you know, one of the amazing things about the Richmond Symphony and this hat, so I've only been here since December of 2020, uh, so I came so mid-pandemic. Right, you came smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. So I have to give all of this credit to our board of directors and the, the team that I have now, but the Richmond Symphony did not uh, furlough or lay off any musicians or staff throughout the pandemic. Uh, really, we're able to maintain the work that we did with them. And it was a, a really collaborative effort with the musicians to make sure that we could do new and creative programming to make that possible. Uh, so it was hard for them because not all of them get their whole salaries through the Richmond Symphony and they lost a lot of work in other places. Um, but they were able to maintain their work with us and that was really an important part of what we were able to offer. So musicians work for the symphony? Musicians work for the symphony. They are oh, highly no. trained, employed. You know they're people. highly trained. Oh, so I don't just think that I'm very good and then I go to the to the symphony and I try out. <laughs> not, no. It's not like that. It's not like that. We have a very strict audition policy and it's pretty tough. Often um, for a recent uh, audition that we had for Principal Tuba, we had 140 applicants and they get a very short time period to show their skills and demonstrate their abilities. And I bet those 140 were very good. Very good. And All of them. All of them. Yeah. 139 of them came away sad. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, ma'am. That's okay. So what are you talking about? Go back and try again? Uh, I mean, they are used to it. It's a sort of the world of, a, of the musicians to do lots of auditions um, and, and wait for that magical moment where their skills and our needs match and they get the job. 
one of my my the best business radio program around. We'd like to thank you for coming on the program. You you got a home now, uh, so anytime anything is happening out there, feel free. I mean, we support all the nonprofits that are out there. Uh, 